Hey folks, Quilly Teen here and welcome to a gameplay video for Millennia, the new 4X turn-based empire strategy building game from C-Prompt Games and published by Paradox. And a big thank you to them for sponsoring this video. Do check the description link in the description. Do check the, the links in the description down below for when and where you'll be able to get Millennia for yourself. So in this video, what we're looking to do is showcase the sort of mid to late game of millennia and in particular we're going to be hopefully entering into the sixth age of the game i'm currently in the age of renaissance over here and if we go and take a look at the screen if we look at the order of things age one age of stone age two age of bronze age three normally the age of iron but <clears throat> someone i'm not going to say who okay it was me was ultra aggressive and as such we entered the age of blood crisis era instead age of blood crisis era does um make it so that uh everyone is at war with one another well this is just talking about the crisis age in general age of blood all nations are locked into a war so i may have slightly set the world on fire via rapid aggression. I did take the Raiders national idea over here to spawn a bunch of units and run roughshod over all of my opponents. In fact, from my continent, from all the way to the south to all the way in the north is entirely owned by myself. And I am playing as Sweden in this particular game. Uh, I'm playing not tall exactly, I'm wide, but I'm only controlling three regions myself. Novgorod in the far south, uh, Mediolan Mediolanum in the far north, and my capital of Vastaras over here in the middle. Well, technically it's still sort of in the south of the continent, but kind of middle-ish. Um, I did actually lose control over this capital after a while, uh, at one point. I hadn't realized that my unrest in the city had gone a little crazy, and it had gone in, it, it declared independence. You can prevent that by spending money um and i think it was 600 gold and i think i was 10 gold short to prevent that so that was pretty annoying because i had to go and reconquer my own capital uh but that's back there and i have reintegrated it of course um i have plenty of other cities i have 22 other vassals and you can with these vassals if you'd like you can integrate them into your um your proper government here which means this town would become a town i control but this is an interesting mechanic that they've gone for millennia and we're seeing that more and more in a lot of 4x games how do you deal with the fact that once you get into the mid and late game, it can take a long time to take a turn because you're having to manage way too many cities. And in here, in Millennia, you have the ability to keep cities as a vassal. Um, and of course, you don't have direct control over them. You don't get the full output of what they provide for you. If you take a look at Leipzig over here, right, I'm getting some amount of gold, some amount of tech, some amount of culture, and some amount of improvement points from these guys. And this is what they have built. But they build it on their own. They spend their own internal improvement points to improve the train. It all goes a little slower, but it does keep the micro down. And it means... I can spend my government points on something else, developing, uh, using my government power or developing my government itself. I am probably going to be going and integrating a few more of these relatively soon because I think I'm in a good position for it. These city, a lot of these cities have grown quite big, but so far so good. Anyway, we were talking about the ages. So Age of Blood was the third age, again, normally the Age of Iron, but not in this particular version of reality. I like how it's got some different technologies. There's some overlap. The War Council, for example, does give you things that you would normally get like the Scriptorium, but there's some like unique stuff that you don't see all the time like these fighting pits uh brutal oh barbarism is kind of interesting because it gives you the ability to create barbarian encampments what anyway i haven't unlocked that but it was very interesting after age of uh, blood we back into the standard age the age of kings this is age four and i'm currently in age five the age of renaissance now from there the standard age is the age of enlightenment which i could start researching now because i've got three texts in age of renaissance so i can go and research that but i kind of curious what the deal is with this age of alchemy i haven't i haven't looked up anything for these i don't have any spoilers i'm curious about this i need one more social fabric insight to be able to progress towards the age of alchemy and i should get that soon because my diplomacy i'm about to hit 300 points in diplomacy i should be able to hit this tolerance button here which will um give me another social fabric point and i believe that's what they mean by that. So fingers crossed that we'll take a look at the Age of Alchemy at that point. I do have an explorer over here in the Age of Renaissance. You can explore these natural wonders a second time. Do these expeditions, I should say. So I'm doing an expedition at this tall mountain, currently an 80% success chance. I'm going to spend 30 engineering XP to make a new path up the mountain and increase my success chance by 10%. So in the next turn, we'll give it a go. It'll be 90%. Hopefully we don't get XCOMed on that one. I mean, one out of ten times, of course it will fail, but it feels so bad if it does, doesn't it? 
You can get it to 100. Oh, okay. My chaos meter filled up. And when that happens, you can get these uh, events that trigger. Um, and some of them are really bad. Sweden used to be renowned for its lively and unique culture. I am playing as Sweden, of course. Something in recent years has subtly changed and people are less inspired by the traditions of Sweden. I can pay, and you do these chaos events, you can generally pay to dismiss them. Uh, so it's actually quite good to keep sitting on a healthy bank account in this game. Or we could accept this. And what this would mean for the next five turns, we would get 50% cultural efficiency. Our cultural meter wouldn't fill up as fast. You know what? I know I've got lots of money in, and culture is actually really important, but I think I'm kind of okay with just doing this and keeping a gold buffer for now. So I'm gonna do this. Brazil wants an alliance with me. I'm gonna say no. Um, the other continent, I haven't seen it yet. I don't have, I'm working on navigation to go and see them overseas. I have no idea what's going on over there, but they keep getting into wars and, um, uh, I've decided to not be in alliance. I actually allied two of them uh, the second I discovered them, and then they just kept starting a bunch of wars. So I've decided, you know what? I'm I'm fine. I'm now living that pacifist lifestyle on my continent. Oh, the only thing I've got to worry about are barbarians spawning from time to time. Right now, there doesn't appear to be any except for some ships, but I've got a few armies scattered out in a boot to try to keep an eye out for any potential barbarian uprising that might cause issues for us. But so far, so good. Um, I think, so diplomacy I'm making, yeah, there we go, seven per turn. So next turn, I'll be able to do this and hit tolerance and see what happens. We do have the ability to level up our feudal monarchy. I don't need manorialism right now, manor real, anyway, with increases vassal prosperity per turn because all my vassals are at 100% prosperity anyway. So we're good there. So I'm gonna skip over that for now. Um, increase the population of all vassals via the oath of fealty is great, or the vassals generate government XP. What's interesting about this, of course, is to progress through this tree, I use government XP. I'm thinking the best thing to do might be to get the royal court first. How much government XP am I getting per turn currently? Uh, eight per turn. So then if we do this, I do have a lot of vassals, but they don't generate that much individually. 8.2. Oh, sorry. It wasn't, I think I, I think I said eight per turn, but I think it was the eight per vassal I was looking at. We were getting eight per vassal, now we're getting 8.2 per vassals. It's not a dramatic change, but it's something. I mean, maybe, maybe it was silly, but you do need to unlock a certain number of these to, to get these unlocks here to uh, clear out. These locks are gonna, there would have been one here, and I think there would have been one here as well. So we've got to go and do some things. So that's gonna be fine. I have recently got some technology to allow me to upgrade some of these uh, buildings. So this is a mine here that's currently mining coal, but I have the technology for deep mine now, which is gonna give us a lot more resources. So we'll go ahead and do that. I love these little upvote icons or upgrade icons uh, for when you do get these upgrades. I got a furnace here, which is currently converting ore into ingots. And because I've just upgraded, well, that's a copper mine. Does Novgorod have spare? Yeah, it actually already has some spare iron that is not being processed in ingots. So I should definitely go and upgrade the furnace to a blast furnace here. That's going to be great. And we'll do some more of those upgrades going forward. Novgorod is complaining about not having access to enough uh, faith points over here. I suspect... Yeah, I have built all the religious buildings I have access to right now. We might have to prioritize um, a religious tech next level. Let's see here. My explorer is ready to go. We are going to go and do another step of the expedition here. The tall mountain should be the final step. Indeed, 90% chance of success. If we get it, we get 100 engineering XP, which is great. And 50 knowledge, which right now is two turns worth of knowledge. That's still pretty good. And we've got a success. I like how it actually shows you the roll. We rolled a 77, which is below 90. So we're good to go. I'll now move the explorer to another landmark. I think there were tons of them. Well, I think there were a few of them left. Oh, am I wrong? <gasps> am I out of landmarks? Oh my, at least on my own continent? <gasps> That's possible. Because there are a few, like there's a Great Barrier Reef down here, the frozen wastes I've done, this tall mountain and Grand Canyon and this tall mountain I've done. Is that, is it possible that that's it? Hmm. Well, I could move you overseas. That's a possibility. I do have the ability to embark, embark in shallow terrain. And if we finish navigation, then we'll be able to go into deep terrain. Although I might interrupt this for our pursuit of the age of alchemy. Because I don't want someone else to start the regular age without me. Let's send you, let's send you out over here and see what happens. 
Assuming you can embark, maybe only my military units can, but I think you can. All right, culture power. What am I going to do here? Well, cutting edge, I found it to be very valuable. Generates innovation per turn. And then when the innovation meter fills up, just like when the chaos meter fills up, you get a big event. Innovation events are really good. Uh, you always get two options. You can accept some sort of bonus. Usually the bonus is really good. Sometimes it might not be, a, it might not be that useful for your situation, but there's always option B, which is a ton of money. Now, I don't need the money now, but it is nice to get the innovation, take the cash and then have a buffer for if you've got the chaos thing. So we could do this because it increases by 10 per turn. Every time you the meter fills up, it does reset the uh, the point count. Um, Call manner is a very powerful ability from chivalry, which spawns two admittedly quite weak units, but still two military units at every one of my vassals. Uh, I have used this once just to make sure I've got a certain amount of troops all over the place. I don't have any outposts to absorb right now. I probably should be doing more outpost stuff. Propaganda, I think, generates minus 10 chaos per turn. Uh, it's like the inverse of cutting edge, but I don't need to do that right now. I could just Eureka. Actually, that might not be the worst idea in the universe. Um, you recaining once per age is fairly valuable. Every time you use it, it does um, lower its strength, but that's per age. I haven't used it this age yet. If I did this, it would probably let us finish navigation and then go towards the Age of Alchemy. All right, I'll do that. There you go. So we're one turn away there, and in theory, this is going to line up very nicely. Doo -doo -doo. Oh, Bursa doesn't have a religion yet. Quillism is our official state religion, by the way. Okay, diplomacy is just maxed out, so I'm going to hit tolerance. There we go. We got one level of tolerance right here, which is going to generate an extra eight wealth per turn. And in theory, so we finish navigation, which allows me to build carracks, uh, get the upgraded version of the harbor. And because I think it's the dock is the base and then we can do a harbor. But yeah, allows you to transport units in deep water. So we can maybe go and look and find our neighbors. Oh, it has to be. I'm sorry. I didn't realize it specifically wants insight. Oh, I was thinking social fabric insight was a point in social fabric, but no, it wants me to get the level four in social insight, which to do that, I would have had to save up my exploration points. Well, I'm very sorry that I misunderstood, misread uh, that there is even the little exploration XP symbol there. So it's quite obvious in hindsight. Ah, uh, all right, we'll go into regular Age of Enlightenment. That's fine. Okay, we'll get some units moving around. Uh, Novgorod currently idle, still uh, would love some more religion. I think I could build some military units, but um, I could get a second explorer. I don't think there's much point in doing that. I think I'm OK because there are no local threats. We're fine. I'm just going to keep building my buildings. I only have three more available to build currently. Uh, these two are upgrades of a current building. So I have um, I currently have an encampment. This is going to upgrade it to a barracks, which gives you more combat XP. And some units require the barracks to exist. Um, I think the Arquebus, for example. Yeah, it requires a barracks. Also, we need gunpowder as well, which we don't have. The Great Hall gives us what? Diplomacy XP. The Lifting Tower gives me more improvement points for terrain, um, which actually makes sense to do this first. Maybe I'll queue up the barracks after because it is fairly cheap. And then we'll have the option to do this. We can You can shift click to add something to a queue like that, which is very handy. How are the rest of my cities doing? We've got a few, um, we've got a few wonders built in a few of these as well. Um, did I build one in Novgorod? Oh, yeah. So Novgorod has the Colossus, which gives me more culture points per turn, which is hugely valuable, plus a bunch of production. Uh, Medio over here built the Senso G and Chichen Itza. And you can see these are light bulbs over here. These are things just like the Colossus that I was able to build because it came up as a innovation event. So very valuable to pursue that. Um, I think our unrest is fine everywhere now. Yeah, I want to save my arts XP mostly to finish up chivalry if we can. Okay, uh, we may as well go and do some more upgrades. Actually, I may upgrade the gold mine. It's good for money. There you go. That's my, my improvement points. So we'll just skip to the next turn now. Cities are getting quite populous now. Okay, Kaifeng, which I don't control directly, just built itself another uh, clay pit. Actually, this is a clay pit. This is a clay mine. So it's upgrading, which is great to see. You're going to keep moving that way. Um, any buttons I want to hit? Actually, I think there are towns to rebuild. Maybe not you. 
See, these with the five, these are um, cities that can't grow right now because they need the region level increased, which is done by building towns. Um, I thought there might have still been some outstanding destroyed towns. It's possible I've repaired them all. Some of them got booped by Barbarian. Some of them got booped by me on my conquest. It's not that. We might actually be okay. Could expand a town if one of these already had towns, but their population couldn't grow anymore. I don't know. I can probably just keep banking this. We could hit the public improvement button, which I clearly haven't hit very much because every time you hit it, the cost goes up. So I don't know if I've used it literally the entire game. Um, and it is quite good because it gives you a bunch more improvement points that you can, you know, use to improve your terrain. Uh, yeah, let's upgrade the gold mine. This gold mine, this coal mine, sure. There you go, and that's all my points. All right, end turn. Maybe what I'll do is I'll maybe do a bit of a fast forward to when we enter the next age over here, because I really want to showcase that. Here we are in the Age of Enlightenment, brought to you by Sweden. Completing your first public, public library building in the Age of Enlightenment provides you with bonus specialists. Secularism grows, preventing the founding of new religions and slowly converts religious populations to be non-religious. From now on, four technologies will be need, need to be researched to advance the next age and new national spirits unlocked. A few more things because we specifically are now in this age, as opposed to just it generally existing, education becomes a regional need. We've got specialists and national spirits slot unlocked. I'm not gonna ally with Brazil. We got a new possible domain here. So what do I wanna pursue? Well, one thing to note is it might be a good idea to look at what you're generating a lot of points from and not necessarily consuming. We're generating eight exploration XP per turn. I could be using claim territory, but otherwise there's actually not that much to be done with. So that's a candidate, for example. But we also want to look at what's good. For example, okay, so for exploration, the only choice would be scholars. Okay, I mean, tech's pretty nice. Education from books goods, which I don't think we're producing books yet. Uh, I, oh, I may have unlocked the tech for that. We'll have to see. Um, great library bonus knowledge per allied or open border nation. OK, you know what? That's a good way for me to be incentivized to um, go with some diplomacy. I think the wars have mostly settled down on the other side. Not that there's a lot of people left to be allied or open bordered with. Scholarly society, a new building. Oh, it generates education and books. OK, I really like this. Warfare, you know what? I think I'm kind of off of warfare. If I want to spend engineering XP, I could go with inventors. Gen inventors generate knowledge, have access to early power generators and gain innovation for each ideal unlocked. Innovation is quite powerful. Hmm, this is a one-time boost. This is probably per, per turn, although it does reset every time you get the story done. Ah, uh, colonialism, great masters. I can't, I wanna go scholars. Yeah, let's go scholars. Um, I don't think we're generating books yet, so let's unlock the Great Library and build it somewhere. But then meanwhile, Brazil, we do have open borders, so that's going to be good enough. The United States, I have an alliance with. And well, I guess that's it. There's only two people left alive. Okay, so again, we may not get maximum value out of it, but we'll see what we can do. I did use my ability from Chivalry. I unlocked the Grand Fife ability or Fief ability, which is a Bouton. That was an Arts power. Oh, can I only use it one time? Arts Culture power. Oh, I think it, yeah, Arts and then Culture. It was over here. So I used that, it generated a Knigget for us as well as a Settler, which is kind of nice. And yeah, I got my uh, Explorer over to the other continent. We're going to use that to just take a peek around and see what life is like over here. Get a little exclamation every time we spot new units. Stops the auto movement, which is very smart. 
Now, what are we looking for? How about reason? A university specialist knowledge. Um, demand for needs plus two education. Academy of Sciences. Literary Salon. Okay, that's actually all very nice. Standing army, increase the maximum army size. That is very potent. What do we have under society? Public library. We actually might want to start that first because I know that when you build your first public library in this age, ooh, coffee house, um, you will get, um, you get a bonus. I think it said we get some free specialists or something like that. Bakery, ooh, very efficient conversion of flour to bread. I do like the improvement upgrades. This makes everything much stronger. Increase the number of towns you can support. Colonies creates a settler. Oh, just an instant free settler. And a colony is an improvement for wealth and trade goods. Hmm. Oh, the central bank. I think it said it, uh, yeah, demand for needs plus one education. National landmark. On build, one time border expansion. Hmm. Mercant mercantilism? Mercantilism? Convert steel into rifles. Convert steel or ingots into tools for production. Oh, this gave us warfare XP versus production. I see. Creates a merchant in your homeland. Well, I think we're going to start with. Um, I'm going to start with society for the public library. Because libraries are good and I appreciate them. Um, I want to save up for the monarchy reformed over here. So 160 government power if we can. Do that and then we can do. We can consider a peaceful revolution. Although. Before a peaceful revolution, because that'll be that'll be a culture power here, the peaceful revolution. Um, we can get this. I guess I do want to do the increased population of all vassals first, don't I? Let's do that, and then we'll probably go straight for this. On the other hand, this is delaying getting the next sort of you know reform version of the government, but I think that's okay. I'm hoping that my neighbors don't mind me going through this. Oh, are you not able to get through here? Because, yeah, there's not enough movement. You couldn't just skip through this friendly unit. That's okay. We haven't gotten any barbarian spawns in a bit. That's good. I should check my cities, make sure there's no rebellion. No, everything's looking okay. Novgorod could use more needs. Oh, I forgot. I finished... Um, Novgorod had no more buildings that they could build. We finished everything they had. Um, so I started working on treaties here, which converts production to tech. But now we do. We can build, let's say, this great library. Let's do that. Excellent. And right, continue move here is fine. You guys have some upgrades available. I don't think we're saving our warfare XP for anything, so we may as well start upgrading. Hold on, am I confused about who's who? Your settler. Wait, did you also have a settler? Did I have a settler parked here for ages? Uh, you know what? That explains something I was kind of confused about. I forgot that this group had an R, uh, that, that this had a settler in it. I thought it was just an army. Here to fog bus. I think I've got plenty of empty territories that I would still like to add a settler to. Maybe way down south in the frozen waste. They can eat fish and stuff. I think maybe I'll settle here. A little silly that's been sitting around not doing anything for a while, but so be it. Um, let's go for the lifting tower first for more improvement points. Speaking of, I've got a bunch available. How is Vastaras doing? We could go and you consume some more flour here. Although, aren't I about to get another building that's better for that? I'm not sure. I don't have anything that converts fish. Oh, I do have a lot of wheat sitting around. So it feels like what I should probably do is go and at least make another mill, which is going to lead to more flour sitting around. So I'm going to pair that with another oven to turn more of the flour into food. I'm not going to do anything else because I think they may be waiting for some upgrades and that's going to be okay. Oh, I have some grapes here. We should absolutely I think that's still under cooking. Build a winery. There you go. It's going to convert two grapes into culture and luxury. There you go. Our luxury need is now 200% met. We actually do need a little bit more sanitation here in Vastras. We've got a couple of... Um, they were middens, midden heaps. Now they're trash heaps. I guess I'll go and build another one of those. Those are under civic, except I don't have enough points for it. So I'll just put a little reminder to try to remember to do that next turn. Deal with that need. Help Vastras. I mean, I'm sure that's not how it's pronounced. But deal with it. That's what we're doing. All right, continue moves, continue moves. You're just going to keep exploring around. We'll visit Seattle. All right, culture power is up. Oath of Fealty. Oh, 
Oh, the Oath of Fealty was a power use here. Okay, you know what? Yeah, I'm fine with it. I wonder if it's going to increase the, pro the population of Volga because it's actually at its cap. Alternatively, what it could do is build a town there with this power. Or if I have engineering points, because you definitely have a town, let's expand this town here, which will alleviate your cap. Now, there's still some, so these guys here with only five points. Let's see if they go up. Because it's kind of fair if they don't, and it would be really nice if they did. It did go up, even though they were at their cap. Ah, ha, ha. Okay, very powerful power. Very powerful power. Uh, we got a reminder about our trash heap. Thank you very much. We're going to go and build that um, right over here. Boop. There we go. And so now, yeah, sanitation need is being much more met. Could still use a little bit more faith. I don't think I've got any buildings that I can build on a tile that generate faith. Oh, we do have public school there. Get, that's how you satisfy the education need. Okay, we're gonna have to spam out a ton of this stuff. General, more advanced improvements, capital builders, provide knowledge, also increase regions need for education. Right, so the buildings consume the education. We generate it with these improvements, these public school improvements, and then they get consumed by things like universities, which then give us tech. All right, I'm picking up what you're putting down in there, game. I gotcha. Still waiting on the reform over there. Vassals are... What are you building? It's all copies of the same thing. I think they like to build little hunting um, lodges. That's probably what we're seeing there. Okay, 900 bucks. I'm good on money. In fact, I can probably start spending it. Uh, plus one bonus government XP from books goods. Okay, we have to see about making books. Um, Right over here. Scrublands, yeah, hunting camps, which provide food and therefore provide a little bit of growth over here. Um, again, I want to I want to finish the uh, reformed monarchy over here. So because otherwise I could be going and integrating these guys, but I really do want to finish that government. So that's going to be my priority. But then we might look into integrating some more people just because then we can take over their growth. I can't do the tiles. I can't mess with their tiles or anything while they're a vassal either. I mean, I don't think so. No. No, you definitely can't. Like, if I look at Kaifeng over here, I can't do anything on the scrublands. It's just not an option. Oh, Ravina is highly capped at population 20. Although, again, I can probably expand your town. There we are. And then these guys don't have towns yet. Uh, Lu Yang is about to get capped out. So I may as well plan on expanding Calmore for you ahead of time. There we go. I guess it turns yellow when they're right on the cusp. That's good information. Good UI work. Okay, I think my plan was to settle here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Get Sigtuna. And it does come in as a vassal. And I'm going to take... You know what? Yeah, you guys can all just go and chill out in here. Sort of a border town, more likely perhaps to be affected by barbarians and things. That's well, good. And then, yeah, we'll, we'll get a reminder once we hit 160 points. Uh, yeah, you can just continue your move down here, please. And then end turn. Seventeen twenty-five AD. Lots of improvement points. Uh, I guess what I should start doing is just spamming down the public schools. Right? Right over here. On. Let's get another one. Is that under Civic? Yeah. We'll get another public school here. Actually, they don't have an education need yet. I, although they are being worked, which is interesting. But I'm guessing it'll really come in once we get a building that requires it. Okay. You can continue your move. Thank you very much. You can continue your move there. Revealing a bunch of the map. I think I might have to reload again. We're, I'm on version 0 0.3 of this game. So, ooh, museum. I think this actually produces education. It levels up the region. Gives us luxury as well, which is currently all capped here. I think I might get the throne room just so we can get some more government XP because we do use that a lot, especially if we're going to start um, integrating more of these vassals. That is going to consume so much. Mysterious jungle. Oh, I might have been able to do expedition there. Maybe I'll check that with my explorer, actually. Um, turn around. Come over here. 
I cannot. So someone's completed this expedition. Okay. Makes sense. The AI has probably had plenty of opportunity. Oh, I can build muskets now and recon balloons. But let's go and get ourselves a museum. And over here, uh, our religious need is actually slightly undermet. So we're going to build a holy site. You are your population. But I, I still have engineering points. We can go and expand a town. There we go. You can keep growing. It's lovely. And we can do our, there we go, monarchy reformed. We'll get innovation generation, which is nice. More culture. And in three turns, we should be able to peacefully revolt to a new governing type. I've actually never done the um, the violent revolution before. Only the peaceful one. Oh, they got a few barbarian issues. Brazil wants an alliance. You know what? All right, you guys haven't been warring. I will accept the alliance. Okay, and what we might do is we might wrap it up here. We've poked around at age six. I mean, I know there hasn't been any like tremendous warfare going on here. Uh, I'm feeling pretty good about my overall position in this game. I have no idea what the victory conditions are like because I haven't. I've been trying to avoid spoiling myself too much, but there will be a video following this one in a few days that is focused entirely on the end game. And my intention is to continue this to showcase the end game in our beautiful Sweden run that we have happening here. Folks, thanks a lot for watching another episode. And I'm going to see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Ooh, and I can do an expedition. Yay!